Hi everyone, the intro of this podcast episode is cut out because we had some audio issues, the levels were kind of all messed up. Um, so at the beginning of the episode we just introduced Mevius, who's the creator of the Mevius com- community map pack over on the Steam Workshop for Portal. He was featured by Valve as the employee of the month this month, and uh, we will be interviewing him in this episode, so stay tuned for that, and uh, again, apologies for the cutting of the intro. All right, and uh, so yeah, so Vic, what's going on with Lambda Generation? Um, as I said, not much going on. Been keeping busy. Not as much as I'd uh, I'd like to, but uh, yeah, I've got some other stuff going on. So it's at you know not as much attention as I'd like it to, but it's going pretty well. Cool. Um, we also have Sean from Mod Informer. Hi, Sean. How you doing? What's going on on Mod Informer? Well, um. We are actually giving away Portal 1 and 2, uh, and the whole thing is basically uh, we're looking for support on Mod Informer, looking for followers and people, um, you know, just trying to get the site more attention, basically. And um, we're since we're giving away Portal 1 and 2, if you like our Facebook page, uh, you'll be entered in a drawing to win Portal 1. If you haven't bought it already, I hope you have. Uh, but for the people who haven't, you know, this is a way to get it for free. And then. Uh, if you want to get Portal 2, if you like the Facebook page and then you have one of your friends like it too, you'll be entered to win Portal 2. And that's not for your friend, it's for you. So cool. um, you can you can do that. Cool. cool. Otherwise, I just published an article on Wolfenstein 3D mods. I did like a Wolfenstein 3D 101 where I talk about all sorts of ports and some really good mods. So if you are looking to get into other mods besides uh, Source and uh, Valve-related stuff, Check that out too. Cool. Also with us today is John from uh, Valve Time. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Pretty good. What's going on on Valve Time? Anything? You guys uh, picked your new logo, right? Did you guys? We did just yeah. get our new logo. Yeah. What's that all about? I don't, I don't know. I saw some of the logos. I can't say that I'm too impressed by this one. I saw yeah, some of the yeah, other I'm entries. Excited. I'm surprised this one was picked. Uh, uh, I can't say anything, so <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not at liberty to say. Uh, but so far, it's been working well. I've been since I'm their graphic designer, so I've been trying to incorporate with everything. Uh, I just put up a new YouTube layout, but people's been telling me it's been having issues, so I've got to fix that. But oh, really? YouTube the YouTube videos are very good, by the way, on Valve Time. I was surprised. Oh, I like the new layout actually. It's cool. Like stuff. Yeah, some people said it was cut off for them, but then I'm like, well, it's probably depending on the monitors people have. So. Oh yeah. People but have small monitors. Cool. Other than that, not too much going on Valve Time. Some recent articles, but not too much. Okay, so before we get into the interview with Nevius and talking entirely about the DLC. We just got some news, so I hope you don't mind, Ben. We just got to cover some news here, and then we'll be able sure. to jump right on in. Um, so some follow-up in errata. Um, the Planet Phillips 6x10 mapping competition is going on right now. Um, Doraville's closing date was May 13th, so you missed it by two days. Um, the next competition begins on June 1st. Um, so I don't know if Philip will be releasing the maps for Dor. Oh, he did. Yeah, yes. he-, he did. Has he? Oh, yeah, he has. Yeah, so there's, um, I haven't even looked at this yet. It's 26 mags. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, six entries. It's so cool. It's a really good number. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it looks, it? it looks like this is going to be a really good uh, competition. So um, you can check out the Dorville release, um, which, which we said this is part of the 6x10 mapping competition. It's just really quick spurts of maps, and then you sort of get scored as you go. Um, so you can take you can take part in all the competitions. Uh, com- and like I said, competition two will begin on June 1st. There's also another mapping competition going on right now. It's all over on MapCore. It's the Perpetual Testing Challenge. Um, I just got the link from uh, from General Vivi right now. Um, so I haven't really looked at it, but you can check it out over on MapCore. He said there's about a week left, a couple days left um, to this challenge, and uh, the rules are there on there. It says challenge begins on May 8th and it ends on the 20th so you have five more days to participate in the map core perpetual testing challenge and we'll talk more about that when it's done and it's released 
I don't know what the what's the winner. What do the winner What does the winner get? Um, on on uh, Torville. Or yeah. Mapcore, I think you were talking about. No, on uh, Mapcore, yeah. It's, I can't. I guess it, I guess it just might be a map pack. So I guess they're just. It's not really a competition. It's just a, a challenge for people to go all get into a map pack, and then they're going to bundle it all into the Mapcore Portal Two pack. So, Sounds cool. really cool. Yep. Seriously. I'll be I'll be taking a look at that. Yep. Sure. Okay, and in uh, in Valve news, of course, um, the Portal 2 DLC was released. We'll talk more about that in a sec. But in some smaller things, um, the CS uh, CS Go had an update. They released the dedicated servers. Um, Vic, you play a lot of CS Go. Have you seen the uh, have you seen a lot of dedicated servers out there yet? Like third party servers? Oh yeah. Loads of uh, dedicated servers popped up. Absolutely full now, which is uh, pretty tremendous. I mean, uh, previously you had some trouble actually getting in the game. Now you have so many servers, you're going to have trouble finding a full server. And that's how, how spread <laughs> out the player base That's how spread out the player base is now. It's kind of uh, people finding and their favorite servers, sticking those. It's a good thing overall, though. Cool. Um, yeah, and some minor changes, you know, nothing, nothing yeah. special this week. Okay, and uh, Dota 2 announced the International is going to be at the end of August 31st, and it's going to be in Seattle this year at uh, PAX West. Um, so stay tuned to PAX both Prime. PAX, PAX Prime. Prime, sorry, PAX mm-hmm. Prime. So stay tuned to both Podcast 17 and the Dota 2 blog on how you can get tickets. But that will be August 31st to September 2nd, and the grand prize is a million dollars again. So, fantastic. Mm. That is crazy. Three more things. Three more things before we get into Portal 2. Um, quickly, Valve and Blizzard has settled their Dota 2 claim. Finally, um, this has been an ongoing dispute since oh god, since like essentially November. Yeah, since when they announced Dota almost. Um, I guess uh, when that was 2010. This was November 2011. Oh okay. Um, so I guess they uh, they settled their dispute. Um, I guess uh, Blizzard is backing down. They're going to be calling their new Dota clone Blizzard All Stars. Well, I, I uh, wouldn't say they're backing down. I yeah, what are you Blizzard. talking about? It's like they're they're conceding yeah, they're, defeat. They're gonna main, no, they're going to maintain non-commercial use. Dota oh, give me a break! That just means they can say it was originally made on the no, Warcraft. No, it doesn't. Engine. It doesn't. <laughs> this is what such a it was such a pointless argument between yeah. those two. It really well, was. To be fair, they were probably trying to establish precedent as well, but this wasn't a total failure, and I don't see how anyone can consider it such a thing. Well, Blizzard's going to be calling the new Dota game Blizzard All-Stars, and... Yeah, uh, they also say that fits their, um, their <laughs> they, design goals a uh, lot better. And they're just true. saying that because they no, they want to make not. themselves feel well, better. I'm, I'm not saying that. <laughs> why, why would I... No, not you. Better? Blizzard's just saying that to make themselves feel better. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I don't think so. No, the Blizzard, the, the Dota name seemed tacked on to begin with, and yeah. I think that's undeniable. Okay, also in uh, from Valve time here, we got... Uh, actually, this is more from Lambda Generation. You guys posted an, uh, the original article. Yeah, but the original article. So, um, Final Hours of Portal 2 is um, kind of an interactive digital story created by Jeff Keighley, uh, who did some previous Final Hours pieces back in the uh, old GameSpot days. Um, Port, Final Fantasy Portal 2 was originally created for the iOS, but it was also ported to Steam not long after. This is uh, this is on Steam. It's been pulled, completely pulled from Steam, both from the store and from uh, uh, play users' libraries because of um, well, apparently Malware, someone. Yeah. yeah so first of all, just to give some quick background, um, to get their assets and files, Final Fantasy Portal 2 connects to an external website. All the stuff they're, they, they're loading up, it's not on your computer. It's on a third-party web server. And so someone has hacked into that thing. And uh, at least three of those file links actually send you to a malicious um, black hole web server that instantly starts downloading mal- malware <laughs> to PC, Trojans. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they've pulled it completely, which is uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't think they pulled it though per se because I still had mine. I think what they did is just you do, you, you do, out of but it. saying it's saying uh, temporarily offline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 
Okay, and lastly here from Valve, not, Valve, sorry, Valve News before we get into Portal, um, GameStop, and we've been we've been hearing rumors about this. We pretty much predicted it, but GameStop is now mm-hmm. selling Steam Wallet vouchers. Uh, they're they're essentially <laughs> gift cards in twenty to fifty dollar increments that you can redeem on Steam, and it will add funds to your Steam Wallet. So if you're looking to you know buy somebody a birthday gift, or if your grandma's like, I don't know what to get you for your birthday, you can tell her to get you uh, these vouchers. <laughs> if of course you live in the United States. Yeah. No news yet. It's uh, limited. On outside it's limited. Of the yep. United States for now. Hopefully they'll be spreading out because GameStop have got stores all over the world. Yep. So yeah. Germany, Norway, cool stuff like that. So well, I'm wondering if it's just going to be a GameStop exclusive or if it's going to be like make its way to other stores. Yeah. That's unclear. That's unclear. Yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> hoping that it gets a much wider release. Yeah. Uh, it, this is something that should be like Best Buy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So let's hope so. Okay, hope so. so let's talk about Portal. And for those who don't know, for those who are just tuning in and uh, don't really know what's been happening this week, the Portal 2 DLC was released. And what it does is it allows you to... Um, it was in beta for a while, so like uh, so like press had it and community developers had it uh, beforehand, but uh, it's now open to everybody. It allows you to create custom maps using pretty much a drag-and-drop editor uh, similar to Google SketchUp. <coughs> and uh, you just basically publish directly in-game. It gets right on the Steam Workshop. People can rate it, uh, favorite it, add it to different collections. And, uh, and as of right now... God, how many are there right now? Does anybody um, have a quick discount? Over 45,000, I believe. Oh, yeah, I don't it's, it's definitely going to be. I think it's like over 75 or something. Yeah. Thousand. Ooh. Oh, it's more than sixty. Yeah. yeah. Probably more than sixty. Yeah. Um, Two <laughs> it's a lot. It's basically actually I'm looking right now four hundred forty seven thousand four hundred and forty entries. Oh, okay. Jeez. That's how many maps there currently are on the Steamwork data uh, Steam Workshop and it's been out for well, pretty much a week now. Today's been a week, right? Um, yeah. publicly for a week. So that is an insane amount. Of Wait, are you are you looking at the top rated? Because some of those might be filtered out, like some of the ones that. Oh, have that's true. Yeah, yet. that's right. I think you're right. I think it's more. It's like seventy-eight. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think it is more. Yeah, seventy-eight thousand one hundred seven. Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that, guys. Wow. That's, um, that's, that's still fantastic. that's still crazy. Yeah, definitely crazy. Um, but uh, but yeah, we got uh, Mevius on the show, and uh, before we start talking about the Portal uh, DLC, I mean, you were very active in the Portal community beforehand, so can you tell us some of the creations that you've done before all this started, or some of the things um, you've been involved in? Yeah, you, you actually covered um, Rexara on, on the show before. Oh, yeah. Yep. And so that was like my, my last big project. Um, before that, I did something called Portal Pro. Um, and those are like, yeah. those are both just big map packs essentially. Um, and it's actually uh, good that Rexar got a lot of coverage because I think that's what got the attention of some of the people in the beta, and they um, asked me to join because of that. So I got kind of lucky having worked on those things in the past. You know, that's how you get early access. Yeah, Rexar was a great, great. It's probably oh, one yeah, of the awesome. better Portal Two mods. It was even featured on RPS, which was Thanks. great. Um, you yeah. did a fantastic job. Um, so, so you got invited to the beta, and what did initial impressions? What did you think of the the editor going in? Like, I wasn't. I was kind of expecting it to be kind of a cheap way to make maps or whatever. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried out the in-game map editor mm-hmm. for Portal yeah. One. Mm-hmm. Oh, for Portal uh, One. Yeah, I mean that gets a, kind of a lot of hate because. Um, you can't do any lighting or anything right. uh, fancy. Um, the edi- the new editor is really great. It, I mean, it looks great. You can make cool looking stuff, um, even with just the simple mechanics. Um, and the best thing is, it's really easy to just hammer out a simple idea, and then you know keep the ones you like, throw away the ones you don't like, and then just polish up the ones that you think are going to make a good puzzle. Mm-hmm. So I've made, like, I don't know, tons of maps, but only released, I think, at this point, 14. Um, yeah, 14. Like, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I go through and I um, 
try to force myself to sit down and make a map, and then sometimes it just doesn't work out. <laughs> so I'll throw that one away. But it's not too much time wasted. You know? Right, because it's so easy to do. Yeah, exactly. And if anybody can do it. I mean, and and because it's so easy, we had some we had some uh some concerns on podcast 17 before this was released. We were a little bit worried about oversaturation. Um but I but I think now a lot of that has been alleviated. The cream is really rising to the top. Um we're not finding that uh you know, people are getting buried just because of sheer quantity. How are you finding that? Do you feel like do you feel like like there's just too much, like it's too easy almost? Um I don't know. Like it's it's cool that 12 Angry Tests rose to the top because that was, like, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it got any kind of promotion or anything like I did, but it still rose to the top pretty quickly for most popular, highest rated. And, I, you know, it's high quality. So if you sort by um, highest rated, you're bound to find a bunch of good maps. Just go through the list. Mm-hmm. Um, then there are also people that, you know, it's kind of a vicious cycle where if no one's playing your map, it's not going to get any ratings and no mm-hmm. one's, no one else is going to notice it and play it. So yeah, Even if um, you put 200 hours into it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you'll be still out. <laughs> yeah, because now there's, uh, like we said, there's over 70,000 entries. But what I think Valve is doing right now is that sometimes on my most popular page, I'll see maps on there that, you know, have no subscriptions or no ratings or no anything. Like, I'm looking at one right now. So I think they're trying to, like, sneak some in there just to get some exposure to the, uh, to the unplayed maps where, while mm-hmm. still killing. It's possible. Yeah, while still Yeah. But, but on most popular, I mean, you and uh, Carrot Carrot are pretty much dominating the, the first couple of pages. Yeah. And uh, Damageppi. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's created other Portal stuff before. Damageppi? Anyway. Um, so you found it easy. You found it easy to create some maps? Yeah, it's really easy. I mean, even yeah. if you've never used Hammer mm-hmm. or anything like that, you can just go in and it's really intuitive. You just select a wall, you can drag, you can basically do everything with a mouse. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. If you're more comfortable with a keyboard, you there's tons of shortcuts too. Um, but I'm kind of mixed. Like I use a mouse half the time and keyboard for you know, specific stuff. But yeah, it usually takes like, I don't know, if I have an idea, it takes like maybe 15 minutes to just flesh out the map. And then from there on, it's just testing and polishing. And correct me if I'm wrong, all of the maps that are part of the collection that you're featured in, they're all 100% created in the new DLC, right? They're not brought into Hammer or anything? That's right, yeah, they're all they're all 100%. Um, new puzzle editor. Um, I haven't actually tried exporting to Hammer, but I hear it's pretty simple. If you're familiar with Hammer, you can take any of those maps and just expand on them, add details or whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And if you could, if you could add something to the editor, um, what would you do? What would you? What feature would you like to see in the future? Um, I think a lot of people want the ability to add their own mechanics. Like one of the things that I would really want to do is add um, this placement helpers, like portal placement helpers that snap your portal to a specific position. Okay. Because mm-hmm. a lot be of my maps are like pe- they have light bridges and people think you have to adjust the light bridges just a tiny bit in order to solve the puzzle. But I mean that's just it kind of ruins the puzzle. It's like it's an annoying way to solve the puzzle. Mm-hmm. It works but it it's annoying to do. <laughs> um <laughs> But I think a lot of people have a lot of cool ideas like energy balls and um, I don't know, any other new ideas that um, I think HMW was talking about um, trying to import one of his mechanics which is this um, thing that teleports a cube to where a laser is pointed. Oh, very Um, cool. I don't don't know if you guys have played his maps but they're one of my favorites. Or he's I see, one of my favorite authors. I see a lot of people like publishing these like uh, proof of concept maps almost, where they're creating like little things. Uh, it's part of our community map pack. There's a couple part of our community map pack, but like uh, just little almost Rube Goldberg devices um, right. to to create either like toggleable buttons or something like that. You know, um, it's cool. So people are people are really taking this to heart and really working hard. Um, your maps are absolutely known for being really challenging and uh, really hard to solve. 
Um, well, yeah, most people say that, and I agree, but then there's people that are like, oh, your maps are too easy. <laughs> Give me a challenge. <laughs> well, well, my, my follow-up question to that is, like, uh, how do you go about designing a map? Do you just jump right into the DLC, or do you draw it out first? Do you have some ideas, or what's your, what's your thought process? Well, usually it starts with, like, I play a lot of maps. I've been playing Portal custom maps for, like, I don't know, three years or so. And so I get all these ideas. I... I keep in mind what I like. Like, if I play a map and like it, I'll try to figure out what I liked about it. If I play a map, map and don't like it, then I try to figure out what I would change. And so a lot of that thinking kind of spawns these weird ideas of like, oh, what if someone used this mechanic in this way? Um, and focused a puzzle around that. So a lot of my puzzle ideas just come from how can I force the player to do this kind of weird unexpected thing Mm -hmm. and make that be the solution. Um, I mean, that's that's generally what it comes down to. Like, a lot of my puzzles are just one idea expanded to make a puzzle. And the same goes for Rexara, Not just for, for your current... Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Like, Rexara was kind of... Um, I developed a, a couple balls, or a couple ideas surrounding the energy balls. Mm hmm and uh, just decided to like try and expand on those ideas as much as I could and um, see what kinds of weird things I could do with them. Cool. Okay, so we're going to go around with the co-hosts. We'll start with Vic. Do you have any questions uh, for Mavius? Um, uh, not really. I wasn't really prepared. Sorry. You <laughs> 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 just call me off guard. I'm sorry. Um, that's a warning to Sean and John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was thinking, so I, I have a couple. Okay, okay, so we'll go, we'll move over to uh, uh, Sean, and maybe we'll come back to you, Vic. Um, mm -hmm. So Ben, um, I, I was trying to think of how I would like design my own maps, um, and to kind of William kind of stole the the question I was going to ask you, um, but I kind of want to ask it in a different way. Maybe I'll produce a different answer. Um, when I sat down to, to build a map, I just kind of started playing with the tools and stuff like that. How long did it take you to get used to the tools and everything like that? Or um, were you just well, automatically accustomed to everything since you've already worked with Portal so much? Uh, I worked with Hammer a lot, and um, but the new editor was different enough that I had to sit down and kind of figure out what, what everything did. So what I, the first thing I did was I just remade um, a couple levels from Portal 2 from memory, just to see if I could um, kind of handle all the techniques that they use. And um, I don't know, after that I, I played a bunch of maps and kind of found some ideas that I wanted to go with and just started trying to make my own versions of those ideas and um, kind of develop my own style in the editor. Cool, cool. I, I, I really think of it kind of myself like a, kind of like a uh, paintbrush as a way, uh, cause just because of how easy it was to manipulate everything um, before in one of our past episodes I was kind of describing that I, I think the, the testing initiative tools would be like um, like one of those old map editors for like a console game. Right. Uh, so I, I really think it is turning out the way um, the way I, th I thought it was going to be. Um, I think the other question I had um, <laughs> I think it ex escaped me so I'll, I'll pass it to John. <laughs> John? Well, one thing, did Valve contact you and say, hey, we're going to mention you on our blog, or was you surprised when you saw that? Uh, yeah, they contacted me, like, um, a couple weeks beforehand and said, hey, we like your maps, we want to feature you on launch. And I was like, okay, that sounds awesome. And then I, but I was still totally surprised at, like, the amount of response that I got on the first day. Like, I wasn't expecting so many people would be playing and giving feedback. <laughs> Did your friends list fill up? Because, I mean, like, I added you just yeah, to get oh, you yeah. the podcast, but... <laughs> I've been getting friend requests constantly since <laughs> since last week, last Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm sure it's all positive feedback, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the people that friend me give me positive feedback. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of, like, um, negative feedback on the, on the maps themselves. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, that's how you get better at what you're doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to say was, do you like how 
this map maker publishes things because one thing I know is like when I got done with my map I wish instead of you having to republish it like once you make a change and you hit save I think that should automatically update what you've already published I mean what do you think about that I mean, well I sure. guess the publishing gives you more control over like because I, I might want to save my map and work on it later without publishing the in-between parts Right. So when people like report a bug on one of my maps, I'll um, you know make the change. I'll test it out a bunch. I'll s maybe save it and come back to it later. Um, don't necessarily want to publish it right away. Because right. I know um, when I oh sorry I didn't mean the, you. the publishing also lets you like publish privately, so you can mm -hmm. get specific people to test it, um, which is a pretty nice feature. Because I know when I was messing with it before, I had. I released my map, and I had, like, four-star rating, over, like, 100 people played it. I was like, oh, cool, and I accidentally unpublished it, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> you lose everything. <laughs> I lost everything, so I had to republish it again, and it's slowly building back up, but I was like, oh, no. <laughs> do you think, uh, before we move on to, uh, move on to Vic, um, do you think, though, that the, the editor is still very limited? Uh, because, I mean... I'm still having a lot of fun playing custom campaigns with custom textures and even seeing old Aperture. Do you think Valve could ever move the editor in that direction, or do you think that uh, it's only its only purpose is to serve like modular chambers like New Aperture, if you know what I mean? Like the New Aperture theme is very yeah. modular. I don't know. It's really hard to say like what they could come up with. Like I, When I first heard about this editor, I was like, how is this going to work? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be so easy and so like flexible as it is. Mm -hmm. um, but for doing stuff like old aperture, I mean, that would require a lot of complexity, I think, to get it to look right. You know, mm -hmm. you'd have to have like the the spheres and like these little thin walls that make up the chambers and catwalks and everything. Um, I don't know. Maybe they could do it. It's it seems like it would require a lot of work on their part, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Vic's got some questions now. So, Vic. Uh, yeah, my first question is um, if you could give kind of the average or average amateur level designer looking again to portal mapping, uh, if you could give them just one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, one piece of advice, I would say, play a bunch of custom maps. Just sit down, play a bunch, and remember the ones you like. Um, maybe revisit them and just try to take away what you liked about them. Um, and um, beyond that, on kind of the logistical side of things, you know, with mapping itself, is there anything else we you would suggest? Well, the editor is really easy to use. I don't know. Uh, I would avoid um, adding too many elements because one problem I noticed with a lot of maps is people put buttons to, like, five doors and five buttons connected to one thing, and it's just totally confusing what, what everything does. Um, not necessarily their fault, it's just there's not a good way to handle that kind of situation in the editor. Because all the um, indicator lines are done automatically, so you don't have a whole lot of control over making it look the way you want, as far as what's connected to what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, find, I find the connector lines to be really frustrating. I, when I was creating my map, I sort of put holes in the wall so that the connectors would go out of the way. <laughs> And make it look right. a little bit cleaner, <laughs> but uh, because otherwise they just follow their own pathfinding rules, which is what I've noticed. Really ugly. A lot of people do is they they put like a button on an island, surrounded by goo, so that it can't find a path for the lines. And what it will do in that case is just put a sign next to the button mm -hmm. and whatever it activates. Right, and those which, signs are random too, right? They're just whatever. Yeah, they're just a symbol. Yeah. Um, but depending on how it's set up, that might be more confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Vic? Uh, yeah. Which of the um, two Portal games released this far do you personally think is the best one? Out of Portal 1 and 2, which do I think yeah. is best? Um, well, I guess Portal 2. I mean, I, they really polished it up a lot. Um, I think a lot of people really enjoyed the single player of Portal 1 more just because they came into it with fresh eyes. There's, you know, there's a lot more like learning the um, 
I guess if you played both, then you look on Portal 1, like, fondly, like, this is where I learned, this is where I first saw portals, this is where I first learned about this technique or whatever. Um, and a lot of people love the, uh, the crazy solutions to some of the Portal 1 maps. Like, um, I don't know any off the top of my head, but, like, the game had a lot of glitches and you could, you could, um, yeah, there was a lot of uh, room for error. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of potential for finding your own way through the game, um, which I think they they kind of tried to fix that in Portal Two, um, fix or hinder depending on what you want to look at. But um, one of my least favorite things about Portal One is the is um, something called Pico Portal. Oh yeah, um, and that was just kind of a pain to design around because. Some people consider it a glitch, some people don't. Um, some people use it at every opportunity, some people just think it's stupid. Is that, uh, so just, just for the people who don't know, and me as well, is that where you just sort of step inside halfway through a portal and shoot another portal? Is, is that what you mean? Or Yeah, it's like where you step, you're standing sort of at the portal, you're kind of partway through it, you shoot a portal and then back up. Yeah, yeah you can't uh, do that in Portal 2. Right. Um, and it, again, it's just it, that was just kind of a pain to design around because different people were expecting different things from that. Mm -hmm. Portal and Two had the original bug where you can get uh, like velocity just by juggling between two portals. Like you shoot two portals next to each other. As you enter on the downward, you just fire the portal again, and you get like a little boost. You can get a little higher and higher and higher each time. Um, yeah. But they they corrected that, so that can't really be exploited anymore, which was good. Because you can break a lot of maps doing that. Um, uh, and my my last oh no go on. Oh no sorry. I wasn't gonna say that. Um, my last question is: Are we so this um, the uh, perpetual test initiative is working really well for you and uh, uh, carrot carrot? Um, but are we ever gonna see you kind of returning to larger scale portal map packs and mods? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, the, I think the uh, the new editor is great for developing ideas and getting layouts really getting the layout of a map really well um, established. But I think Hammer is still like the best thing you can use if you want to make a really immersive experience. Um, and and like I said, like my favorite my favorite style style in Portal Two was the old aperture spheres. And mm -hmm. I really want to like take some of my ideas and put them into that setting because I I love making maps that look cool as well as you know have a have a puzzle. That's what Twelve Angry Tests was really did well. Um, I agree. Yeah. Even though at sometimes it was it was well no that wasn't Twelve Angry Tests. There was another one that was really hard in the collection. Decay. Anyway. Yeah, decay. I don't know if you played Decay, Ben, but... Uh, I haven't yet. Oh, my God. My list. Some of the concepts in that is <laughs> mind-boggling, man. It took me forever. Anyway, um, but, yeah, that was that was really crazy. But uh, 12 Angry Tests looked beautiful. It had some great scripted sequences, which, unfortunately, right. you can't really do in the new editor, so... Yeah, exactly. And it takes you through, like, all the, um, all the sections of Aperture. It's like mm -hmm. it goes through the old sections and the... Um, and some of the new parts. Yeah. And sure. the boss fight, that's something you could never do in the editor. Yeah, the boss fight was cool, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, I got some questions here from Glenn, actually. Glenn Lawrence is listening in from, uh, from Valve Time. And he says, Can you ask him about the mini-tests at the start of some of the chambers, which teaches a concept? Why did you add those? Did you find people tested and missed those ideas? And did it help focus a plan of attack? Um, so I think I just added, like, two of those. Um, mm -hmm. There was one where you it kind of teaches gel dropping on a box makes the box bounce off of a button. Mm -hmm. um, I added that because like I didn't know if people would remember that from the game or you know people might just get frustrated because they never thought to do that in the second part. Um, it was just kind of a a last minute thing like. Uh, my my playtesters didn't really have trouble with that one, but I still figured that if you're new to Portal, you might, you know, not... Or if you haven't played Portal 2 in a while, you might not remember that little trick. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think the second one was uh, using a funnel to push a, bo a box off of a button. Yeah, I never, I never quite understood. Uh, there was like the, the the second last map in your collection, and there right. was like a little section where you you were taught something, and then you had to do it. Um, yeah. I don't think I really understood fully what I was taught because <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> the solve lesson, the puzzle afterwards. <laughs> yeah, the lesson there is supposed to be if you have a box on a button and the button is activating a funnel, um, an excursion funnel, then you can use that excursion funnel to quickly nudge the box off of the button. Mm -hmm. But it, that was never done in the game, and, and you know, it's it just seems like kind of a weird concept. So I figured it would be worth teaching it. Yeah, it almost creates like a temporary toggle, right? Is, it, is that the yeah. idea? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I still didn't get it, but <laughs> but it was good that you taught it first. And it, it brings up the question about playtesting, because um, I never even thought about the concept of playtesters using the new DLC, but you're right, you can publish privately, like you said before. So you have a, you have a group of playtesters, I guess, that played through some of your maps? Well, I've just been like collecting all these friend requests and hoping that... <laughs> my friends will play maps before they get released. Um, I think I have like two or three sitting in my friends only list right now. Mm. Um, just probably going to release them maybe this weekend or just slowly over time I'll be releasing more maps. Cool. Um, does anybody else have any questions before I open it up to listener questions? Well I was going to say um, do you think that this map maker has, will maybe eventually have the ability to do a co-op mode? Uh, yeah, I think I think they're actually working on co-op mode mm -hmm. right now. It's a big, that's a, that's definitely needed. It's a co-op um, mode. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right now, they, they actually um, prevent you from uploading hammer-made co-op maps, because I guess they don't have the, um, the, the infrastructure for you to start a map and play it with someone. Um, but once they do that, I'm sure they'll open it up for co-op maps. Are you going to do any uh, co-op maps yourself? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Good. I've actually made a co-op map in Hammer, um, but I, I can't upload it yet. Um, mm -hmm. But you could find it on Thinking with Portals if you go and search for Mebius, or um, the map is called Electrophobia. Cool. Um, so you mm, can I check that out if you like. Uh, you uh, submitted it in the Summer Mapping Initiative? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a great map. Uh, thanks. <laughs> um, Sean, any last questions? I'm gonna and, and anybody who's listening right now and part of the live chat, um, feel free to throw us questions, uh, put them in the chat, and we'll be sure to ask uh, Mevius on your behalf. So, Sean, Mevius, um, Ben, I, I'm just gonna call you Ben instead, but uh, that's yeah, call me Ben. <laughs> when, when uh, I see, I've seen some of your comments, people, uh, people's comments on some of your maps where they'll post a map that they've made and they want you to try out. Do you ever do that? And have you ever found a, actually a good map other than um, just an attention whore? I think... I, I mean, I've played a few of those maps that people put that people post, and some of them are good, like half of them, um, which is actually a pretty high ratio mm -hmm. for what mm -hmm. I was expecting. Um, but yeah, I mean they're they're always hidden gems, and I and I feel bad for the people that have to like get attention by posting links on other people's maps. Yeah. You know? So I don't I don't want to take them down. Um, maybe after after a while I'll go through and like delete some of the comments that are just links. But for now I leave them up because I mean if someone's desperate enough to go and post their their map everywhere, might as well give them benefit of the doubt, try it out. Mm -hmm. We got another question from Glenn. He says, uh, and this is sort of a heavy question, um, he says, can you ask if he's noticed any degree of split between Hammer users and the fact that any person can use the puzzle creator? He says he felt a deg degree of dislike between the two camps. Uh, do you think it's a problem? And he uses the word casual modders. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've noticed that some people um, kind of think that the, the community is going to get really flooded with really bad maps and that um, it was good when Hammer was the only th option because you had to invest a lot of time in mapping. But then again, it's like the new editor gives people who don't want to invest that much time, they can invest it in pure puzzle design. They don't have to invest it in learning the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so I mean, to some degree, there's there's a bit of a split, but I don't think it's anything to that's like gonna I don't know erupt into some sort of hey, let's kick out all the people that use this editor or whatever. <laughs> and then I got a follow up on that then too. Um, do you think now? Now with the addition of Steam Workshop for Portal, this pretty much uh, nullifies websites like Thinking with Portals or uh, or any any online distribution platform for for well, for map Thinking with Portals actually recently like as they're starting to integrate with uh, with the workshop. Mm -hmm. So like if you post your map on the workshop, you can go to Thinking with Portals and link it to that map. So uh, there's a sense of like uh, evolve or be killed almost. Uh, maybe I don't know, mm. um, and it's still the only place to get co-op maps. Yeah, well, yeah, and I guess there yeah, are other sure. other sites for it, but for sure, um, I frequent thinking with portals a lot, um, just because it's it's kind of a close community. There's a lot of um, respected mappers there uh, with a lot of good ideas. Cool. Um, and what about uh, you know? Uh, knock on wood when when the new Valve game ever gets released or even any other new Valve product um, and they take advantage of Steam Workshop I mean we've we've speculated before that it'll pretty much uh, ruin the, or remove the need for sites like Planet Philip or any other even maybe possibly even ModDB would you agree with that or do you think that people will still try to seek out other distribution sites for mods and custom maps and stuff <laughs> I don't know. That's really hard to say. Like, because on any of those sites, they have like reviews. They have um, uh, people chatting about the specific topic. It's not like mm -hmm. on the workshop. It's basically you respond to a map, and that's it. Um, but on Planet Fill Up, you know, they have reviews. They have um, um, votes by moderators and things that uh, so you know they've played a lot, and their opinion is. Um, I guess more valuable, um, and sure. and then you have sites like Thinking with Portals where it's kind of a close knit community. Um, there are you, you make friends there basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Okay, so we got some. I mean, not very serious listener questions. Um, the first question, and if you've never listened to Podcast M Team before, um, this is sort of a question that all the listeners always ask. So I gotta ask it. Um, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> what did I have for breakfast? I had nothing for breakfast today. Nothing for breakfast. That's <laughs> you know surprisingly that's the most common answer. <laughs> um, the next question is, and this is something we haven't even talked about yet today. Um, your favorite new Cave Johnson line, and I just want to uh, prepend that with uh, for anybody who hasn't played the new DLC yet. Every time you play a new map on the DLC, you're introduced to a new Cave Johnson line. And it's sort of this ongoing story between you traveling through different multiverses and uh, different caves entering different multiverses and other test subjects going in between the multiverses and every multiverse to having different themes and stuff. Um, they're absolutely hilarious. There's a total of 25 minutes, I guess, of, uh, of Cave Johnson lines. But the question was, what's your favorite Cave Johnson line? I think my favorite uh, collection of lines, at least, is the sentient cloud. <laughs> um, all right, everybody, let's have a moment of silence for the sentient cloud, and then just clearing his throat. I, that's probably my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I laughed as much at it at another one. I like the soy the soiling green one, but a lot of oh, people don't get that joke yes. because they're too young. But that's a great one. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Michigan Slim Cave Johnson. I'm the Bobo King. <laughs> he also had a reference to uh, Logan's Run with, uh, you know, kind of a thing where they say, or Kate says, uh, happy birthday. And today we're going to look over the list with uh, elder elderly yeah. aperture scientists, and she's, he's, he's like, oh, um, Martha, who's 98, gotta got to go die now. <laughs> Did you hear the creepy line that he does? There's a couple. Yeah, um, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> oh, I yeah. see your little feet. I'm like, what in the world? Is Cave going psychotic or something? Good I love the uh, the Manus Man one. No. Oh, that was that was good. That was brilliant. Surprisingly, I've played so many maps, and I can say that every time I play a new map, I still get a new one. 
I haven't listened to like any of the YouTube videos because I like to get them as I go. But uh, I've played a yeah, lot of I maps. I still haven't. They made they recorded a lot of lines, and they I still haven't made my way through all of them. You know, um, I was saying in our in our mumble the other day that I mean I'm I'm sh- I'm assuming it has a lot to do with money, but Cave Johnson or um oh, sorry what's the what's the guy's name? Vic? J.K. Simmons. Yeah, J.K. Simmons. Oh. J.K. Simmons. Um, he must have really loved working for Valve if he was willing to record all those new lines, because uh, that would have been a lot of work. We have a video up on the Valve Time YouTube page that has all the lines, so if you guys want to take a look. Really? Yeah. How are, they, is it? are they in order, two, too? I think so. I think it's two 15-minute videos, if I'm correct. Mm. Cool. So. Yeah. I like, long. I, uh, I like the ones, too, where, like, Dark Cave and uh, Cave Prime start to work together. And then Dark Cave <laughs> is, like, talking about the Moneyverse. If you guys remember the Moneyverse, and then offers you asparagus. Yeah. Like, it's oh, God, like... I haven't, I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> it's so funny. Because <laughs> they start to work together. I, I'm spoiling it. I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but it's really good. Wait, way to spoil stuff, William. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> chariots, chariots. Chariots, chariots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good Apparently stuff. there's a cave out there that uses chariots. Okay, so I'm going to say chariots, chariots. <laughs> um, so, so Mevious, uh, what's what's in the future for you? Still more Portal 2 DLC? Are you going to be working on another mod? Sort of like, uh, can we expect to see Rex Aura 2? Uh, maybe. Um, so I'm going to probably be making some more uh, DLC maps. Um, you know, releasing them, like, probably once a week. Um, and then, you know... Depending on how that goes, I'll, I'll put some of them together, maybe remake some in Hammer, maybe develop some new ideas. Um, I do want to uh, do a new mod. I think those are a, little, a lot of fun, and you have a lot more control, mm-hmm. um, creative control over what you do with it. So, I mean, definitely, definitely I want to. As for if I will, it just depends on you know how much time I have in the future. Um, Leveraged has a question. He says, how many maps... You sort of touched on this already, but not giving a ratio. He says, how many maps have you made that just suck? What's your failure to success ratio? Um, I'd say it's probably 50-50. Yeah? Okay. Every two maps, I make one that just sucks or totally broken or the idea just doesn't work and um, just throw it away. Or, well, it's still sitting in my folder, but, you know, I don't publish this. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I mean, uh, the other half is basically just work out the bugs until it's um, release quality. I had another question as well, um, and that's that's talking more about the Valve Hammer editor and the Source SDK. Um, do you think that Valve is in a position right now where they absolutely need to update the Source SDK? Do you have a lot of problems with it? We got a lot of people who come on the show saying they have problems. You know, it crashes every once in a while for me, mm-hmm. um, but. I save frequently, so it's not it's not a huge deal. If they worked on the crashes, I think that would be nice. But I don't I can't really think of any other features that I would want okay. in the editor. Cool. Um, I, I've been using it for so long though, so maybe like my mind is closed off to new ideas. <laughs> uh, or you've just made some workarounds. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess that's it. There's no more questions. Um, uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, John. Go ahead. Uh, now, have you done any other mods, or have you just stuck to Portal? Like, have you done any, like, Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns or anything like that? I, I actually did make a Left 4 Dead 1 campaign, um, oh, but cool. I never released it. Oh. Uh, just because I, I don't know. I'm not as good at making maps for Left 4 Dead as, like, Portal. Um it's it's a totally different frame of mind. Like in Left 4 Dead, you want to make these open areas where zombies can sneak up on you, and like you make your way through through a city or something. There's a lot of detail that goes into the visuals. Um, right. Where in Portal, like the visual aspects are really simple. Um, it's all about like making a good puzzle, which is you know you approach it from two different angles. Um, I just think I have more of a more of a talent for portal than for other source games. Okay. This this follows up into a question uh, Leverage has another question. He says, do you prefer to make larger maps with multiple puzzle concepts or smaller maps with a single fo- with single focus on a concept? Uh, well, I tend to do small maps with 
um, single focus, but then I kind of do those in sets. Like, I like to release um, a pack of, like, three levels or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you go and play my co-op map, it's basically a pack of three levels. The levels themselves are pretty small and focus on one thing. Um, but uh, it's just a set of levels, so you don't get bored by just doing one thing. Okay, so that's about it. I'd like to uh, thank you, Nevius, for coming on the show, Ben, and uh, yeah, talking with for us. Me. You've done. Um, thank you. Oh, John has another question. Sorry. <laughs> I keep cutting you guys off. <laughs> keep uh, rolling you back, but um, the question I was going to ask is uh, since this is a lot of people have just used um, the, the tools, uh, the DLC, um, would you encourage uh, the people that just use the tools to try out Hammer to see if they can? Um, you know, use it and produce something better than what they can use as a DLC? Yeah, I think so. I mean, with the ability to export maps, you can get a good, like, you can make all your walls and connect all your things together in the editor, and then you can export it to Hammer. And that would be a really good way to, like, learn how Hammer works by adding little details that you might want to um, make more specific than you can do in the editor. Mm -hmm. well. Well, again, thank and then there's also just you know new people who might just want to pick up hammer and do everything from scratch. You know that's good too. Yep. Um, it's more time consuming, but I, th I encourage people to do it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so thank you again, and uh, I just want to mention some some links here. Of course, you can grab your maps on the. Uh, you're still featured. You're still. Are you still the top collection? I don't know. Let me check. Uh, it might be 12 Anger Test. Oh yeah, 12, 12 Anger Test is top right now. But if you just uh, if you want to play um, Mevius's pack, um, you could just uh, go to the Portal Workshop, click Collections on the top. I'm showing it on the video right now. He's the second one down, uh, right there on the uh, on the first page. And uh, while you're there, check out 12 Anger Tests, which is the first one by Carrot Carrot. It's uh. It's it's a nice change from from Mevius's maps because Mevius you did all your stuff in the DLC. Twelve Angry Tests yeah. is one hundred percent in uh, Hammer, um, so it's got like a story and stuff. Uh, both are really great packs. And then while you're there, if you scroll down just a little bit more, you'll get down to the portal uh, podcast seventeen community chambers, and we're still on the first page. Woo! Right. I can't believe Check it. That out. The only reason we're on the first page is because we submitted it really soon so it got a lot of like initial it, these these maps aren't very good i'm just i'm just kidding um <laughs> but basically what it is it's a collection of um all the the podcast 17 community not just the hosts but uh the listeners as well um people who have friended me so if you want to get your map if you're a podcast 17 fan if you want to get your map part of this community chamber pack um friend me i guess on steam uh, if, if I still have some invites, um, and, uh, and I'll see your creation on my friends list, and then I'll add it to the pack. Um, so basically we got, like, uh, we got maps here by my man, OCR Billy, Modman, Glenn from HalfLifeDo.net, Risewick, Twin Sons, SB Man, uh, Pelk, uh, Wimchimp, General VV, Jack, Mangley, Montag, uh, Patrick, Myself, uh, Dr. Home Fries, Fodder Stomp, uh, we got one from John. Um, Is General VB going to finish his Portal 1 mod? I don't know. I think he's listening right now. <laughs> he might be able to tell you that. <laughs> uh, Flamov from, uh, from Steamcast, Zombie, Liam H., Quantum Dylan, The Crazy Mormon, Cornet Theory, Backscratch, uh, Takoya, and Bailey. So all those guys have contributed to the community chambers, Podcast 17 community chambers. Um, but uh, but we're missing a few. We're missing one from Soda Player, for one. So Soda Player, he's a diehard listener. He hasn't submitted. And Vic. Vic, what the hell? Where's your map, dude? I don't have one either. It's <laughs> coming. It's coming. Oh, when it's on. done. I actually just when have it's an done. idea for to go. So. Valve time. That's it. Valve time. <laughs> Lambda generation time. <laughs> oh, okay. And for all the people who want really hard maps, who think my maps are too easy, you should check out Maps by Gig. It's just G-I-G. Um, if you search for his profile, you can find him. Uh, he had a bunch of maps on the beta. Uh, I don't know if he's uploaded all of them yet to uh, the full version, but um, they're really hard. <laughs> 
So if you want a, a nice challenge, you should look at his maps. Cool. Um, and just the opposite end, if you want some easy maps, uh, my friend Motanum is pretty good at making them. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was on the, uh, he was very prominent on the, uh, on the Steam Workshop. I've, I've yeah, played still is. Yeah. He's doing some really cool stuff, especially um, a la Tag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think he'll be continuing that series. Um, yeah, he said he's going to do gel. a bunch. Even, yeah. I think, one with Speed Gel, which is going to be pretty cool. Cool. So, if you haven't played the DLC yet, now you got lots of stuff to play, because those are all really great collections, really great maps. Um, so get yourself immersed and check out some of the Cave Johnson lines, because they're fantastic, and just have fun. Overall, I think I think this uh, this whole release, this whole DLC was like a fantastic success. Does, can everybody mm-hmm. agree with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wasn't expecting it to be this popular. It's crazy. Um, so, so with that said, um, we're going to finish up the interview. We got some more things to cover on the show, just some discussion stuff. I want to mention the Sven Co-op release, um, and I'm sure Vic wants to mention the uh, the interview with uh, Black Mesa. Um, so, so maybe you're you're welcome to stay. We're just going to finish up the agenda. We won't be too much longer, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, and then sure. we'll close up the show. Um, so, in releases and updates this week, not a big release list, but something that I'm personally involved in. Um, it's hey. the Rage Map 2012 was released for Sven Co-op. Basically, Sven Co-op does these community map packs, and uh, my section is actually included in this. Um, I haven't played the full release yet, but um, but you can check it out. I think it's more than one map, and it includes really really crazy awesome areas. Rage Map is always pretty fun to play. Really fun to play. Unfortunately, the screenshots do not cover my section of the map, but it's in there. So, um, so yeah, check it out. If you play Sven Co-op. That the only release. What's that? This is the only release? Yeah, it's the only release this week, I guess. Yeah. Everybody's been it playing is. Portal, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, the, the, the Rage Map 2012 is uh, two maps, and you can actually check out a video of it, too. Um, I'm halfway... My map is... My section is halfway through the first map. I'm number eight. So, it's cool. I, I'm ha- proud of myself. I'm proud of everybody else. Sven Co-op community is awesome, so check that out. Um, so, Vic, I know you want to talk about it. Tell us about the RPS interview with Black Mesa. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Nathan Grayson of Rock, Paper, Shotgun interviewed um, Carlos Seaman 2 k Montero, um, who's the uh, team lead of Black Mesa Swords. Uh, this is a two-part interview. It goes into a bunch of uh, pretty extensive detail on a bunch of Black Mesa related topics. There's even two new pieces of media. Uh, one from Surface Tension and one from uh, Questionable Ethics. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is a really lengthy, really insightful interview. They talk a lot about the, um, the infamous missed 2009 deadline. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carlos explains how that happened, how they managed to miss that so horribly. Um, you know, he also discusses the way Black Mesa team works, which is really interesting. Uh, you know, it sounds like they actually work a lot like Valve, but kind of even slower, which is really amazing. Um, give some detail on the, um, the technicalities. Like, for example, you won't need anything to play Black Mesa, not even TF2. It's going to be played for free on any Steam account. Um, he also touches a bit on the history of the mod and how originally it was more of a Half-Life HD instead of a Half-Life reimagining. Um, and at the end, he kind of gives in to um, uh, Rock, Paper, Shotgun's questions and, and says that um, the team is working very hard to get something out to the Black Mesa fans in the soon-ish time frame. <laughs> he says he isn't going to say anything more than that. Uh, you know what? I was reading this interview, and one thing was very clear to me. And that's and maybe maybe Nevius can chime in a little bit on this, is, is that the team at Black Mesa, uh, Black Mesa Source is, they're perfectionists. And I think that might be, in my opinion, this is, it's just very objective, I think that might be their downfall, is that they're so mm-hmm. perfectionist, they're trying to reach AAA quality when... To be honest, they're just a mod team. And I think that yeah, might I, be what's hindering them. I um, 
try to stop myself as much as I can from being a perfectionist because like I used to be I used to have that mindset where I wanted everything to be just right and then you know I never release anything so mm-hmm. um, nothing ever gets nothing ever really gets done and I don't get feedback and um, you know that it's it's better to release something that mostly works than to not release something that's perfect yeah and I agree I, th- I think they're trying to reach like as being hobbyists they're trying to reach a standard that Valve has reached and and Valve I mean m- without putting them too much on a pedestal they're professionals they've been in the industry forever um, most of them have been part of other AAA game studios um, so so if Black Mesa Source is listening or if anybody can take anything away from this it's that you shouldn't expect yourself to be awesome people aren't even though you're crea- recreating Half-Life 1 and that in itself is a great game. Um, nobody's expecting you to be better than it. If you are better than it, then it's good. But nobody's going to hold you against it if you're not up to Valve standards. I mean, I certainly won't. Um, and judging by the screenshots, they're already doing excellent work. I think they're just trying too hard. And I've really come to the conclusion that that's what their issue is. They're trying absolutely too hard. And it's and if they try to reach Valve standards, they'll never meet that. Because there's a reason Valve is the best. Because there's nobody else like them. So so I don't think a hobbyist team will be able to do it, personally, especially if you have real-life jobs or something like that, but that's just maybe me being a little bit more skeptic or hard on Black Mesa Source. So. Vic, you're surprisingly silent. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to start yelling at me, dude. He is. He's just <laughs> canning it up a little bit more. <laughs> No, I'm not canning it up. I, I was kind of talking to Leverage in the chat. He was kind of arguing that um, Valve doesn't actually work very much like BMS, uh, the BMS team. He kind of says that, um, you know, maybe Valve has the resources to allow that kind of playtesting. Um, and what I think he's trying to get at is that um, that's kind of how Valve works out being perfectionist. You kind of have the resources to pull it off. Mm-hmm. Um, but Black Mesa, obviously, they don't have a budget to bring in a hundred people to play test their games. Um, I still think they work along like Valve, though. In in some respect, yeah, and in in other respects, uh, I I would say no. Um, okay, so moving on into uh, discussion, we'll jump through these real quick because they're really just community topics. Um, the first one is Planetfield poll question two seventy four, and he posits or post-its, um, will Steam sales eventually backfire? He quotes Gabe Newell here saying, then we decided that all we were really doing was time-shifting revenue. We were moving sales forward from the future. And um, he said he would never have thought, I would say this, but it's possible that the sales are too good. Um, Do you guys think that the Steam sales will eventually backfire? Um, And more specifically, do you hold off on buying things for sales? Like, do you not buy anything now on release date? Because I don't. Mm. I usually wait a couple weeks or so. Um, for example, this isn't, a, this isn't a computer game, but SSX3 for PS3 went down to $30 two weeks after it was released. So I, I at least wait a little bit. I'm not I'm not the kind of guy to pre-order something unless I'm getting something I really want. Mm-hmm. And I know Steam has a lot of good sales, so yeah. I usually wait off on computer games. That's what I did, did with Skyrim. Yeah. Vic, how about you? Um, yeah, no, I don't think that, um, you know, it's going to backfire in any meaningful way. I think there's going to be a time when uh, maybe their faith in Steam sales is going to kind of wane, when they're kind of going to not be as effective as they currently are. But, um, you know, I think they're going pretty well right now. Cheap games mm-hmm. for small prices, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Uh, ben, anything from you? Any comments? Or I know you're just tagging along, but I buy a whole lot of games. But when there's a game I really want, I will buy it on release day and you know pay full price or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really a huge deal because I don't spend a whole lot of money on games anyway. Mm-hmm. I have a follow-up question for anybody, and that's: uh, Do you think Valve is setting a standard? Because two years ago. Um, as gamers, we would never expect games to go on sale unless you'd find them in a bargain bin like 10 years later. Um, but now, when I see a game on Steam, I immediately ask myself, when is it going to go on sale? 
So are they setting an expectation for the for themselves and for the games, which possibly hurt sales? Because maybe those games will never go on sale. I personally say I wouldn't say they're setting a standard. I I just, I just think they're doing it because they can, because uh, it's you know digitally released and you know all the costs of like shipping and then you know having the product in store and all that stuff are literally gone. They can you know sell them so cheap. I wouldn't say it's the standard. I, I, I do see a lot of other online um, distributors doing the same thing, having super, super cheap sales. It's because they can, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on into the other discussion. I'm going to blast through these real quick. If anybody has anything to add to them, just uh, feel free to interrupt me. Don't be shy. Um, <laughs> Source DS GUI. This was uh, tipped to me by... Crap, I can't remember who made this. And uh, Jack. Jack. Oh, crap. Jack5500 actually created this. It's a uh, it's a GUI so that you can to host uh, source dedicated servers. It's like a graphical user, user interface for those who don't like uh, going through the. It's it's kind of like a GUI, but but then also it opens up to a console. Um, but this is but this is full on GUI and uh, it supports a whole bunch of mods like demons versus humans, uh, which isn't even out yet. Um, Creed's climbing, no more room in hell, modular combat, fistful of frags, action half life. The list goes That's on. Sweet. And, uh, and yeah, it's, if you're looking to host some servers, then uh, pick up Source DS GUI made by a Podcast 17 listener. That's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. That is really awesome. This is cool. Yep. It's, it's great to see that people are still working hard on uh, unofficial source tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's also uh, Source Sauce. Particle. Particle Alert. Oh. Yeah, there's that too. Yep. Particle Alert. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next thing on the list is, um, this has been floating around all week. Um, if you remember, we actually showed this poster a couple weeks back. It's a poster of, like, Gabe Newell, um, with a crowbar and an HEV suit and his knife showing Half-Life 3. Um, there's actually a making, making of video now, so you can check it out. It's about seven minutes long. It's one of those, uh, time-lapse videos, so. It's been out for a while. What's that? That, that video's been out for a while. Has it? Okay, it, it's just been making its rounds this yeah. week, and we've never covered it, so. Um, so you can check that out. Um, this was tipped by me, and I don't think it has much credibility, but this was also floating around everywhere on the internet. Uh, GameStop actually posted a listing of Half-Life 2 Episode 3 on their sort of coming soon page or on their um, on their listings their, page. Um, insider thing, yeah. I think one of the uh, yeah. GameStop club thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm. but, uh, but they since pulled it down, so rumors flow, just letting you if guys I know. Recall, um, yeah. If I recall correctly, just provide some uh, extra information. They had a release date of New Year's, and after that thing was taken down, they actually had a separate one for Half-Life 3. Yeah. Which mm. was, um, I don't know, they're obviously being insistent about it, but yeah, I wouldn't put much, uh, much weight on it. Yeah, they're obviously retailers, you can't take anything by them. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they just wanted to draw in people, you know. <laughs> check out our online <laughs> store. Hey, check out our... Hey, look. That's like three. And look, by the way, Diablo's out in a couple days, so make sure you pre-order it. <laughs> buy it now. Oh, <laughs> buy, buy Diablo. Um, Which doesn't have mod support. Yeah. Damn it. So there's... On NECA, NECA has officially introduced uh, their second... Portal device replica. This is featuring like the Peabody skins. Um, they've created one before, and it was only available to like a thousand people. Uh -huh. Five thousand units, I believe. Yeah. And this one has the same amount. Two, yeah. Just five thousand. But they're doing some. Thousand. They're doing some PR work now. Um, they didn't really do PR work for the last one, but. Uh, yeah. But if you can, like, RSS their blog, check it out or add it to your phone or something, because as soon as this is released, or as soon as this is announced and you can buy it, um, they'll let everybody know, and I guarantee it'll be gone within a day. Um, well, I mean, this is cool, but, um, I mean, are people really that crazy to get an orange polar gun? I think people have just been a lot more excited. To get the original? Um, yeah, they did uh, yeah. a 10,000 unit run of... Um, the standard common yeah, program. that's what I thought too, for sure. And I think it's um, they probably saved some cash, right? Those orange paints probably cost quite a bit. <laughs> you know, save some money on that. <laughs> now, any CA, you should hire me. I'm just saying. <coughs> <laughs> 
I haven't looked at these Kotaku links because they were added sort of last minute, and actually I haven't looked at all four of these Kotaku links. Um, um, but has anybody I here? Look, I looked at the second one, which is... Um, okay, tell us about that. Super, yeah, Super Monday Night Combat, which is um, the free-to-play sequel to Super Monday uh, to Monday Night Combat. Mm -hmm. um, it's a third-person shooter, I believe a multiplayer one. Yep, yep. Um, very heavily based around... Dota mechanics, mm -hmm. uh, action, you no know, kind of MOBA mechanics. Um, it's uh, it's got some great promotional stuff going on right now with uh, TF2. If you play Super Monday Night Combat, I believe um, there is about you know kind of uh, two in-game TF2 styled hats you can get for Super Monday Night Combat. But also, if you play that same thing, you're also going to get um, two. Uh, Team Fortress 2 hats. Well, uh, no, two Super Monday Night Combat hats for Team Fortress 2. Fortress, yeah. Um, yeah, based around those uh, Super Monday Night Combat characters. Um, this is kind of like the other free to play promotions for TF2 that mm -hmm. Valve has done. They're kind of indefinitely going on. So, any any time you're kind of interested in checking this out, it's a pretty good excuse. Mm hmm. Okay, also from Kotaku, there's a Portal 2 remix. I'm not going to play it right now, or else it'll ear rape all the listeners. Oh my god, oh. somebody's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so check it out. It's apparently really good. It's 4 minutes and 45 seconds long. It features You're a whole bunch of Cave Johns and stuff. Um, <laughs> so it's pretty up to date. So check that out. And lastly, um, on discussion... There's uh there's something here on YouTube. It's real tracking and shooting portal turret. It's basically a project um, for some from somebody's advanced uh, mechatronics class at Penn State. Um, he built a robot um, of the skele uh, robot skeleton of the turret from Portal that uses an IP webcam to track uh, and target and fire Nerf bullets at uh, oncoming people. That is sick. So, so check that out. There's a video of it. It's like a three minute long video of. Um, of it working, so. So that's it. Anybody else have anything else? Anything else they want to add to the uh, to the show? Um, well, the uh, some of the media blitz we skipped over a lot. I just wanted to to point out for Canvas, uh, they're kind of taking a um, just kind of like a hiatus on that mod, which I was really super excited for when I saw some of the new. Yeah. Um. But they're just kind of saying, yeah, we're not quitting it. We definitely want to finish this. It might be finished as a indie game. It might be finished as a mod. So one of the two. Um, was um was Canvas that really fancy Silent Hill style mod with great graphics? Yeah, I think. Oh, it was like the creepy cartoony one where yeah. like you had the psychic mm -hmm. teddy bear. Remember they released that that like huge manual of lore in like the the PDF format, and it was all very. Very detailed, yeah. yeah. Of like the psych um, psychicness of people. Anyway, two things I like to bring up. Okay. I really mind. Um, IGN did a, a listing of their top fifty video game worlds. Guess who won? Half Life. Half Life Half Universe. Life. Top fifty um, video game what? Uh, hold on, I'll post post a link in the chat. Um, okay. Yeah, they're saying the Valverse and. Um, to kind of um, saying oh, world. the overall Half-Life Portal universe. That's um, definitely yeah. what they're going for. For you know, not just for the variety of different settings. You know, like Aperture, Black Mesa, and City 17. Um, but you know, just the depth and the quality of those individual settings is um, really something that very few other developers successfully pulled off. I don't find um, I don't find City 17 and the Half-Life 2 worlds nearly as interesting as I found the worlds in Half-Life 1. I love so. the idea of Zen. I love the idea of Bordo worlds and opening portals between them and the, the Vortigons fleeing to Earth as sort of a safe haven to the Combine. Yeah, I love that more whole going concept. into the story side of things, strictly setting. And I definitely say City 17 is a lot more interesting as a mm -hmm. as an environment than Black Mesa because now let's be honest. Is, isn't Black Mesa just your stereotypical underground research facility? It is, but a, with a really awesome twist. <laughs> I know, but you could say that about everything, man. Even Call of Duty, you know, like Black Ops Two, <laughs> such an awesome twist. I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying anything bad towards you. 
but I think uh, you know, kind of bros tend to nostalgia glasses. I uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I I'd say it's nostalgia too because <laughs> I, I did come into Half Life with Half Life One. Um, same, same here. I I felt like Half Life Two was just better. Um, it, for me, Half Life One could have been a little bit better. Uh, they did a really good job. I'm probably gonna get a. Little oh, I think. Uh... We lost I think him. he just crashed. <laughs> Mid sentence two. Damn. So, <laughs> oh, I can't his, believe it. His image is funny too. Anyway, um, so so do we have anything else? <laughs> one, anybody one wants to talk about? Yeah. One more thing. Okay. Real quick. Um, this guy um, did a really cool kind of uh, mock-up um, Steam redesign. Uh, his name is Josh Coley or Coley. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly kind of doing this overall kind of unified Steam design, um, application, website, boat, and mobile, and especially oh, yeah, so in the context of the upcoming big picture mode release. Oh, cool. Um, it's right here. It looks really, really good. Um, it definitely needs some work. Uh, I know he's getting feedback from pretty much all the major websites, mm -hmm. Verge, Reddit, Kotaku, so hopefully He'll be adding some more stuff on that on his blog. But yeah, check it out. It looks really good. Cool. It's it's this guy. This guy should um should definitely be looking forward to um you know, kind of uh maybe talking about because uh, obviously they're still working on their stuff on yeah. the big picture front. This guy's Are pretty good. Are we able to download that from the guy or is it just a concept? It's right just right? a mock up. It's just a mock up. Okay. Yeah. But hopefully maybe there's actually a way to Turn this into a real Steam mod. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be cool. Okay, so with that said, that's another episode of Podcast 17 The Can. I'd like to thank uh, John. I'd like to thank Sean and Vic for coming on the show. And special thanks to Mevius, Ben, for coming on the show for the interview. Thank you again. And uh, shout out to Andy B, Game Ender, Steve Vinson, and Sven Air for being slaves to the Overmind. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Sean, Sean just came back. You want to say bye?